went into that break, we were just talking about Keir Starmer, and particularly um, still the conversation that surrounds his clothes, his wife's clothes, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. We rightly pointed out, Alex, before the break, that now um, Keir Starmer has given back, if you would like, £6,000 worth of gifts. Yes. Uh, tickets, hospitality tickets, uh, some rented clothes or something for his wife. And also now, um, the, the donor, he's under, he's under some investigation. form of investigation as well. What do you make to some of this stuff? Well, of course, you want to have an investigation, because then you can say, this is happening into this person who's tertiary to our core team, and it will take some time, and it will be wrong to prejudice or prejudge the result of that investigation, so let's wait until it's finished before we say anything else about it. It gives them a holding position which, by God, they need, given how badly they've made a mess of things recently. But I must say, even though, you know, from first principles, I think the, the finality or the grubbiness on show of taking this money and you know, people paying for your suits and glasses and so forth is ridiculous, once you get there, I think they've made a real mistake by yielding any ground at all. Mm. I, don't, I wouldn't have returned a penny in Keir yep. Starmer's shoes. Because once you start returning six grand, well, why isn't it 15 or why isn't it 20? And, and yeah, what about the other 100 grand that you, you accepted? And you wind up basically admitting... You get none of the credit for saying that you were in the wrong. You get none of the credit for doing the right thing because you didn't. But then you also get you, you concede that you've done something bad. And once you go down that road, the questions will never finish. Is it that just shows fair? how incompetent they are. Aaron? I couldn't agree more. Uh, and it's really important to say that since 2019, Keir Starmer has accepted more goodies and gifts than any other MP. That's right. So people might be watching this and thinking you're being really harsh, it's politically targeted, he's the PM, he's going to get the most attention. You'd think that's true, but no, he took more goodies than the other 649 MPs. Why? Because this is a bit... It's it, I mean, really weird. Why does a man the, pay for another man's dress? But this is a bit... I don't dresses, understand. I if you're on the burns of your bottom and yeah. you literally can't afford to clothe yourself or your family and a very rich man comes along and says, you know, let me buy your spectacles and your pants, yeah. I mean, your first question would be, the first the sane-minded question would be, well, what's in it for you? What do you want? But this is not a man on the burns of his bottom. I you suppose can, what you thinks is, why not? I can, I can take it, it's, you know, I'm in office, it's one of the benefits of doing it, why, why shouldn't I? But I tell you how badly they've got this wrong. Whatever you think of the issue itself, park that for a moment. For, for a week, more than a week, the story was Keir Starmer accepts 16 grand's worth of clothing. And the team around him knew there was another 16 grand mm. that sat as the donation for the office, which was in fact also clothing. So the real figure was double. And if you were competent to, the f to any degree, you would get out in front of the story and say, well, just to I'll be clear, it's 30, the real figure is 32,000. They waited for a week for the sh other shoe, no pun intended, a lot of shoes, the other shoes to drop, and it was 32,000 uh, pounds. That's just basic incompetence. But, but is it incompetence or is it deliberate they, no, deception? It is it because this is what to me this is what I don't understand. I mean, it, to me this is so nonsensical, so upset. You think they might cross their fingers and think, thought, no, it just won't happen. No, no I'm one just will I'm realize. starting to think how because it, it can't be sheer incompetence, surely. I it, mean, normally, surely. Normally in politics, at the point at which you think no, but surely nobody can be that stupid, they can be. And that's not a party political point either, by the way. Mm. The Labour Party has no monopoly on this. I'm just saying, uh, when normally when you think to yourself, surely there's got to be a more complex explanation, there isn't. But then everyone has come out. Um, Keir Starmer's uh, top team have come out and all kind of... Um, they've batted for him, they've defended this, um, they know nothing to see here and so on and so forth. So I'm quite surprised that... Uh, some prominent people in that team haven't come out and been a little bit more, actually, um, yeah... It's not great. It's not great. I'm astonished by the amount of defending that's been going on. Well, there's a bunker mentality, isn't there? I mean, that's what it seems to indicate for me, is that they're completely detached from wider public sentiment. Um, and also, this is a really important point. I mean, Alex is right that the, the lack of professionalism in the response really is jaw-dropping. For so long, you could disagree with Starmer, you could disagree with the policies, but his office looked incredibly competent and professional. And it's been the opposite of that since they've taken yeah. office for the last three months. And that is the $64 million question. For me, it has to boil down to entitlement. They, they think they're entitled to these things, that they deserve these things. And also, that Keir Starmer himself is so virtuous, yeah. because he is virtuous regardless of what he does or the choices he makes, you can't criticise him for his choices because they're Keir Starmer's choices and therefore they're virtuous choices. I'll just give you one other reason why this matters for the government going forward. In the worst days of the Johnson and Sunak administrations, you'd have the government under attack for something. It would send out its ministers. They would defend the line. Then government would concede what was being said mm. and you'd hang out your people for no benefit and they felt embarrassed, right? That was in the worst days of 14 years of 
Tory government. Starmer's having this already. Mm -hmm. He's sending his ministers out to defend him and his venality and his wife taking stuff. And then they concede by saying, OK, I did something wrong, here's some money back. They're conceding that they were in the wrong. Now, let's imagine the next time you're asked to defend the line as a Labour minister. Are you going to want to? Are you going to loan your full-throated support to Keir Starmer, knowing that Downing Street may reverse the position by the afternoon and make your talking points that you didn't want to give in the first place an absurdity? That's one of the reasons it matters so much in government. When you perform this kind of U-turn, which Starmer's done when he gives given back money, there's no end to the challenge. But also, you're, you're undermining all of the people that you made stand up for you. Well, yeah, because often uh, people have said, I know some of you guys at home have got in touch and you've said, Michelle, is all of this stuff going on in the world? Uh, why is the media focusing so much on uh, spectacles, pants, dresses or whatever? The challenge that you've got when you set the expectation, when you set the bar, the standards uh, with your opponents, and don't forget everyone with party gate uh, and all the rest of it, the obsession that everyone seemed to have uh, to get to the nuts and bolts of everything, wallpaper, you name it. This is the kind of landscape now. This is the level. If, if you make that bed, unfortunately, uh, you do have to lay in it. But look, let's talk about uh, leadership then, shall we? Because the four final uh, candidates in the Tory race, uh, they made some of their pictures. And I'm going to look at uh, some of the goings on. But uh, Kemi Badenoch, one of the things that she said about wealth uh, made me kind of sit up and listen. Uh, let's just take a listen to what uh, she was saying. Wealth is not a dirty word. It supports jobs and families. It pays for our schools and our health service. We should defend it and encourage it. Yeah, I was watching that. I was going, you go on, girl, yes. Was you, Alex Dean? She's absolutely right. And the extent to which we've got into this weird conversation in this country, suggesting that wealthy people are bad, uh, you can now take a look at the way that uh, the Treasury is seeking, I think, going to partially or wholly reverse its attack on uh, so-called non-doms because they realise how much money it's going to cost them. You're not going to benefit from driving people out of this country. It'll, it'll cost money. You want people to be wealthy. You want people to aspire to do uh, more. You want people to earn significantly. And this is something... Because they then pay their taxes and they spend their money in your society and society becomes richer. This is something Peter Mandelson used to understand. When he was in government, he would say he couldn't care less about people becoming filthy rich as long as they paid their tax. Well, as long as you... And you'd hope this Labour Party thinks it's going to make sure that people pay their fair share of tax. It should never resent the wealthy. Instead, they go around, unless the wealthy are donating dresses and spectacles and, and, and suits to them, uh, the Labour Party go around all the time suggesting that the wealthy are bad. Well, you can always level down. You can, you know, reduce relative poverty by lopping off some of the, the percentage of the most wealthy people you have in your country who wound up going and living somewhere else. But it's generally a bad idea because they are, those are the entrepreneurs, the investors, the people who spend money and create jobs. But you're in the camp, correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron Bastani, mm. where you would talk about wealth and think that actually, uh, when it comes to capital gains, capital gains should be taxed as income. Mm. I don't think income, but look, if you, I think dividend tax in this country right now, so you get a dividend... It's about 39%. I don't see why capital gains tax is so much lower than dividends. You might want to tax dividends less. You might want to increase capital gains. I think a slight bumping up in CGT makes sense. But I'm going to, I'm going to return to somebody that maybe some of your audience hasn't heard of before. Deng Xiaoping, who was a member of the Chinese Politburo, he said, um, poverty is not socialism. Getting rich is glorious. Uh, so there is a left-wing tradition beyond just Peter Mandelson of saying that actually people becoming wealthier, and like you say, Alex, they pay more taxes, that can contribute to the body politic becoming wealthier too, that that tradition exists. What I would say is the problem is tax. If you're getting rich and not paying the tax, that's when people get really upset. And I think that is the direction of the conversation in the last... No, but it's a level of taxation. This is where there's so much disagreement, isn't there? It's the level of taxation But also just tax think... avoidance, tax evasion. I mean, there is some tax evasion. There's also lots of tax avoidance. Which a lot of people indulge in, by the way, by way of ISIS. And there's different kinds of tax No, no, that's, right? that's entirely lawful. Tax, yeah, tax evasion, wrong. Uh, tax efficiency, sensible, most of us practice it. And this is a, what's being taken... The line being taken here by Aaron is far more sensible than the person who normally sits in the left-wing chair on Dubs and Shay. I try uh, my who, best. Who says we should all pay higher tax and then you say to that person, well, go ahead, uh, you feel free to cut a cheque to HMRC, they'll cash it, and they uh, stumble some weasel words out about why they didn't mean themselves, they meant more generally in society. Um, that position is a reasonable one. Maybe we CGT is at slightly the wrong level or maybe we should have a different tax on, on dividends and so forth. I'm up for that discussion. I'm broadly speaking in favour of lower taxes at all points everywhere. I think it, uh, I think it produces much more activity and economic growth 
um, to have lower taxes. But at least you're honest and reasonable uh, about your position in a, in a way I think is fair. The difference in, is that Starmer and Co have come into government with such a negative view of the world. They, they, everything is utterly gloomy and utterly terrible. The idea that the UK was a great place for an investor, even if they marginally improved the investment environment, is not one I think currently would, would, would hold water internationally. No. They spend so much time saying how bad things are all the time. Yeah, but people will be watching this. Uh, some people, you perhaps will have been to the Labour conference a few days ago, and you would push back against Alex saying, no, oh, they're all depressed and gloomy and all the rest of it. Um, many people would argue the energy on display at the Labour conference, the optimism, um, because we've had chats about this. Many of you think that actually, uh, now that uh, Labour Party uh, are in power, that we are apparently looking up and progressing positively, Aaron Bastani. Well, there was an amazing story out uh, yesterday. The Telegraph covered at the Times, I think The Guardian too, and they were saying that business sentiment has taken a massive hit. Business confidence has taken a massive hit. Now, The Telegraph, of course, not very favourable to Labour generally, was saying that's because of Labour's policies. But actually, increasing tax and whatnot. But if you drill down into what happened with business confidence, it went up in July and August, and this is according to a bunch of measures, not just Lloyd's, Institute of Directors, it went up. Change of government, okay, let's see, try something new. And it's gone down in the last month. Oh, and this. It, it has cratered <laughs> in the last month, yeah. partly because I, I mean, I'm, 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 being, I'm just trying to be honest here. You can't have the Prime Minister saying, we have all these problems, everything's awful, everything's garbage, and by the way, we're not going to change it very much, and all I'm offering in the short to medium term is more misery. Why would you invest in that country? Why would you? There you go. Why, indeed. And I can tell you what, you're an unforgiving bunch. Um, I'm looking at your social media now about this £6,000. Cathy says, uh, Michelle, mud sticks. The £6,000 basically is irrelevant. Elizabeth says, uh, all too little, too late when it comes to retaining things. The damage has been done. Um, do you have a bit more of a sympathetic view towards Keir Starmer or open ears? If you have, get in touch and tell me. But look, uh, I will look a little bit more at the Tory leader uh, speeches and what they're promising after.